morning. Um, I thought this, con this panel was all about unaccompanied children, but you can see this conversation has drifted to other matters of the separation, the children being grabbed, grasped away from their parents or whatever. So if we could just get back, and I appreciate Commander White, uh, you're trying to clarify the difference in this debate between separated children and unaccompanied children. Because I think that's what we were supposed to be talking about here today. So, but I'd like to go back as we begin on this, on this whole discussion about crisis. Several of you have talked about that this is a crisis at the border. And so I'd like to, if you could, just quickly, the four of you, it's a yes or no. In the past nine months, during this year, 2019, has there been a crisis at the border? Ms. Maxwell? As the Inspector General for HHS, our focus is solely on HHS's mission, which is the unaccompanied alien children. It's, it's so a yes or no. Is there, is there, is there been a crisis at the border? I don't have any immigration expertise in which to make that judgment. Okay. You ducked it. Say? Yes, Congressman. There's absolutely crisis at the southern border. White? Yes, Congressman. Anytime we Thank cannot you. timely place children in custody, it's a crisis. Thank you. Jeez. Yes, sir. A border security and a humanitarian crisis at the border. Well, but yet, part of what we're fighting here in Washington, that's what shows us the unfortunate divide on this, is that we've got other folks don't agree with you. Um, that there's not been, it's all fabricated story. This was an article that, that came out in July. It said that uh, this was a manufactured crisis. And even Steny Hoyer went on to say that there is no crisis. There has not been a crisis at the border. Uh, the, the quote's all through this. It's a made up crisis. It does not exist at the border. It's a fake crisis, it doesn't exist. That's a lie. It couldn't be further from the truth. There is no crisis in arrivals. There's friction. I could go on and on with people saying there's no crisis. So it's no wonder we've had this problem dealing with this issue because people won't accept the, the reality of what's happening down there by trying to cover up for it. So uh, if I could, and then we have a problem uh, with the reluctance of, of people in, in communities to talk about taking care of these unaccompanied minors. The, the funding for Democrats, here is, here's an article that came out uh, in, in late July. The Democrats call for closures of shelters for unac unaccompanied minors, not to separate, unaccompanied. They want to close those facilities. I think we have to be careful. Then we go to, then we go to the third, which is where the company minors could go to other communities where they could be housed. But then you just came out in August, Washington DC says, not here. We're not gonna have, we're not gonna house minors, unaccompanied minors in Washington DC. So this whole issue of one after another, I, it, it just, it concerns me about where we're going because if we don't expand the shelters, what are we supposed to do? What are you telling our, this committee? What are we supposed to do if we're not gonna expand the shelters and we're not gonna build and occupy facilities around the country, what are we supposed to do? Turn these children loose? Is that what it is? Can someone give me some direction as to what we're supposed to do? If we can't build them and, they can't, and you can't put them in a, a different community, what are we supposed to do? Because how, I, I, I see some hesitation on your part because the, the problem next goes to, if, we're, if, if these kids aren't in a controlled environment in either Washington, D.C. or wherever else that we've heard some of the other communities or here in Texas, what kind of medical and psychological care will these kids get if they're not in our control somehow? Will they get it by just drifting on the streets? I, I, I need to see it. I'm from West Virginia. I don't see this thing on an everyday basis. So tell me, what happens if we don't put these children in a shelter? Where do they go? Unaccompanied minors. Uh, Congressman, um, I, I, I see your point. Uh, and I would just say that um, I think that's why Congress moved uh, the Unaccompanied Children Program to HHS back in 2003 with the Homeland Security Act of 2002. Uh, and the commitment of ORR and the leadership of HHS is to increase our permanent network capacity so that we can receive these children as quick as possible and provide for them the care that we need uh, as we work to get them to a sponsor. So that's, that's our mission, and, and we would 
appreciate the continued partnership with, uh, with Congress in order to move in that direction. But Mr. Hayes, you're not, you're not getting support to expand the facilities, and we're not getting communities willing to accept them. So my question, I understand the policy, but how do we work, make it work uh, if no one's helping? Yeah, so um, I, the same ask I made yesterday of the Labor H Committee, uh, I would appreciate um, and uh, help and support from members of Congress in helping educate uh, the communities uh, across this nation, especially here in our own backyard in D.C. and Northern Virginia, as to the critical role and child welfare mission that ORR has, and that the majority of the children in our care are indeed unaccompanied and by statute are required to come into our care and custody as we work to safely find them a sponsor while they're immigration proceedings. Thank you. I think Thank there's a lot you. of misunderstanding about our program, sir, and we can have Congress help us educate the American public on How it. How much time to explain Chair now recognizes the gentleman.